Woodland Hills, Los Angeles resident, 54-year-old Russell Wolf is driving to brunch. And at first, he doesn't think anything of the guy in the white shirt walking his dog. But then he's shocked by what he witnesses. A neighbor he's never seen before vandalizes a local fruit stand. So he goes after the aggressor to investigate. What do you want? That's an illegal business in my neighborhood. I, I told them repeatedly, get the out of my neighborhood. Then you call the police. I you did. Don't, they didn't know. do anything. They're selling stolen fruit. What's your name? Two days later, when Russell is buying fruit from the stand with another local named Leslie, the irate neighbor returns, so Russell starts recording again. I think the strawberries look beautiful. Yeah. You know, they might be beautiful, but they're stolen. Yeah, they are. They're not stolen. He has to have receipts to prove that they're not stolen. That's the law. This is, he has no business this, permit. If, if Let, my me kid, Let me finish. If my kid wants to put a lemonade stand here, are you going to do... Call them That's different. That's you're different. a bully. No, you're, you, a you're an idiot. Russell has seen a fruit stand on this corner for the last six months. And he's not sure whether the owner has a legal street vending permit, but he is concerned by the aggressive attitude of his neighbor. Tomorrow I'm going to spray WD 40 over all the. Oh, come on. Who are you? This is our neighborhood. It's my neighborhood, and I'm not going to tolerate this. You don't know what the you're talking about, bitch. And I'm not talking to you. You're calling me what? I'm calling you a bitch. Yeah, you're what, a fool. Are you, what are you going to do about it? I'm telling you, I'm talking to him. Where are the receipts? No. Where's your business permit? By now, this neighbor rager is attracting attention. Oh, Where's your help and safety? <laughs> you. But this seems to incense him even more. You know what? If we put up with this, next thing you know, you're going to have a Tijuana whore <laughs> behind the church. Did you really say that? You're going to have a fentanyl dealer on that street corner, OK? It's called broken windows. You are. Yeah. You're absolutely a racist. You're a fool. Realizing he is not winning anyone over, the neighbor in purple decides to retreat, but not before he threatens to call the police. So call the police. Get to the police and then show us to the law. I don't have to show you anything. Do your Oh, my God. oh I did, and I know who you are. And soon, the neighborhood learns not only who he is, but where he lives. A couple of weeks later, Russell, Leslie, and dozens of other neighbors surprise him with a protest rally outside his house. You're acting like a child. Yeah. And he reacts poorly. Spraying people with a hose is considered to be a criminal offense. So the police arrive, and he's arrested and charged with battery. Despite all the local support, the fruit seller, Tomas, decides to move to another neighborhood where he's selling his goods hassle-free. I have a question. When y'all got out of the car the other day and my old man was right here, why would y'all be in rude? Because that right there made him cry all my night. Rude about what? Laughing at him. About what? I don't know. Y'all were sitting, your old lady was sitting right here staring at him, and so were y'all's friends, and y'all were cracking up. When you came out, you oh, looked at him. Too. Oh, no, we just got back. Well, don't answer no door. stupid question. That's not stupid. I'm just asking. I, I promise you that every day I come out here from now on, I'm going to make fun of you. Well, I don't just like care. I'm going to do you. I don't care if you sit over there and cry yourself to sleep oh, every well, night. Well, you don't have to. But if you, you don't what? break your over there. I want you to put me out. I want you to do it. Man, he can't put you in jail. You know we can't. Get the hell, you son Get the hell out of this no, yard. No, you put me out. You start You gonna You do something. Put your If it's not already painfully obvious, these neighbors have a long history of dislike for each other. Get the f out of the yard. Get the out of here. Put your hands on me. Come on. Come on. Having failed to talk his neighbor off his property, the homeowner tries a different approach. No, no. Stop! Please stop! Stop! Oh my God! Stop! 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 stop. Babe, please come here. Just stop. Oh, really? Get the out. Everybody's going. Go. While it's not clear what started this particular fight or what happened after, one thing is certain: this altercation could have been avoided if they had a nice big fence between their yards. It's a quiet afternoon in a subdivision of Las Vegas. 
This homeowner and her neighbors have just noticed a dog walking off leash in the street. I got him. She calls the wandering pit bull over, and he seems friendly enough. It's not mine. Her smaller dog, named Max, comes out to say hello with a customary dog butt sniff. Without warning, the pit bull snaps and tries to bite down on Max. The homeowner desperately tries to keep Max out of the pit bull's jaws, even putting herself at risk of being bitten. Max is less than half the attacking dog's size. A single bite could prove to be fatal. Suddenly, a hero appears. Max, get back! A package delivery driver puts herself between the attacker and its victims, giving them an opening to run safely inside. No! No! Thanks to this delivery driver, Max and his owner escape with only minor cuts and scratches, proving that not all friendly neighborhood heroes wear capes. Some wear delivery vests. You're a bad dog! I'm sorry? What are you trying to say? I can't throw away the trash? You can't throw away your trash in our bags. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. The man filming is African American, and he's lived in this development in Vero Beach, Florida for the past six months, caring for his elderly parents. He just wants to deposit his trash in the community bins. But his neighbor is having none of it. What's hey. your name? And what are you doing? Please. Here? You're excused, ma'am. You You're work harassing here? me? Wow. This is Florida, folks. Got a racist lady here. <laughs> That's yeah. a big mistake on your part. Oh, okay. Why do you don't think I live here? Because of the way I look? I was president of the Homeowners Association. Okay. And to my knowledge, I know everybody who lives here. Okay. You knew every single person in 42 buildings? Where do you live? Huh? Do you know every single person in 42 buildings, ma'am? Thank you very much. I rest my case. I mean, we have this happen all the time. Right. You know. I feel sorry for you. Oh, Don't worry about it. Oh, you got a dash. Have a good day. Racist people are the best. Look at her. She's trying to get in the way. She won't even let me go. My gosh. What is wrong with you? Are you serious? I can't even throw away my trash without getting harassed by you. Seriously? I have to go. I can't even believe this. Oh my gosh. What are you doing? I'm not leaving till I what? Fess up. About what? Throwing away the trash? The astonished man looks for another way to exit, but there is none, and he has to circle back. But this neighbor nightmare isn't over yet. Ma'am, can you call the police for me, please? You live here? Can you call the police for me, please? You live here? Are you another one? Yes, I do. You do here. Don't worry about it. I don't need to prove to you guys that I live here. You actually Please. Do. No, you don't. I'm serious. Why do you I don't live? need to prove to you where I live. Where do you live? Why do you not? I guess what I'm, please ask her, ma'am. Why does she not think I live here? You guys are because. ganging up on me because I'm dark skinned in the neighborhood and you don't know who I am. And I, you know what? I think you're right. Thank you so much, ma'am. I gotta say, if, if that's your only reason for you didn't recognize him, that's not a good reason. Thank you. People come in here all the time. She's obstructing the highway. I know, I saw. Her. This is her last opportunity, or else I will forego my day and press charges on you. Uh, okay, let's get this de-escalated. I am sorry. Thank you. Oh my gosh. After this incident is reported to the Homeowners Association Board, the woman is asked to step down, and the man's dad is invited to join as Vero Beach strives to make all its residents feel at home. <laughs> Henry Grau is a computer support advisor who sees his neighbors more than most since he works from home. The apartment complex that I live in here is in downtown Fort Lauderdale. I've lived here for about five years, and I know my neighbors pretty well. Henry's apartment is next to the common courtyard on the left, so he and his security cameras see more activity than other apartments set further back. In October of 2019, 
We got two gentlemen that moved into the middle apartment right next door. For the first few months, Henry's relationship with his neighbors goes well. Until the night of December 17th. I'm sitting at home one evening, and I'm noticing some activity outside in the security camera. There's no other way to describe it in any cleaner form, but it looked like he was kind of playing with himself in a way. It made me very uneasy. I felt kind of like I didn't have any privacy all of a sudden. He just totally took away my freedom at that point because I kept having to go check the windows. For six nights after the incident, things are quiet. Until December 23rd at 7 p.m. when things escalate. I thought, hmm, I wonder what's going on out there. The neighbor is working in the courtyard garden right outside Henry's window. This time, Henry confronts them. I went outside and I'm like, hey, thank you very much. But if you could, just leave it alone. It's kind of creeping me out when there's somebody out here at all hours of the night. I came back inside. I noticed he was still out there. And I said, wow, this guy's not going to stop. If it takes for you to leave my window alone by pulling out every last plant, I'll pull them out. Henry decides the only way to keep his neighbors out of his garden is to have no garden at all. After that, our relationship was started to deteriorate in a way that was quite shocking. The more Henry tries to avoid both neighbors, the more they continue to harass him, including pounding his windows at random times throughout the day. Once they started getting aggressive where they were banging at that point, I felt, OK, we got to call the police. Breaking and entering. But it's the middle of the pandemic. The police are not readily available, and Henry's two neighbors are getting more and more aggressive. It's scary as heck because we didn't have any help. It got to the point that I was actually afraid to stay here at night. Now feeling trapped in his own home, Henry fears the rising tension with his neighbors could lead to a serious altercation or something much worse. No, no, Why are you doing that? It got worse to the point that I was actually afraid to stay here at night. I mean, have these cameras running 24-7, going back to the footage of the cameras. Get away from this property. Get away from this property. By spring, it looks like Henry's luck is changing. We noticed that uh, they started to pack up their things and leave. We were really excited. I was sitting here texting the neighbors, hey, guess who's moving out? But Henry may have begun celebrating too soon. It took them probably a couple of days to move out. And then on their very last day, you can see them cutting the cable from one of the corners of the cameras. You see them throwing paint glass bottles at the door. With the neighbors gone, Henry could finally let his guard down. After they finally moved out, then I started to like feel a little bit more at ease. So I said, all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and take down the camera system. We left the one camera facing the courtyard. After I got everything down and, every and felt everything was safe, the uh, older gentleman showed up again one night. He started to uh, bang on the windows again. He actually broke it, cut his hands so bad that he was like dripping blood. He comes over to the uh, door and he starts putting all his blood on the door. From that point forward after that night, pulled the cameras back out, put them back up, and I've kept them there pretty much to this day. As you can see, they're still running. Oh, yeah. He's a and Henry has a message for his old neighbors if they should ever return. I want them to know that I'm watching. The neighbors know what they look like. The police has a trespass warning on you. We're not going to allow anyone to come and terrorize us again. I'm the one banging on your way. Why are you keep doing that? Why do you keep doing that? I'm living in this really peaceful neighborhood. 
My house is incredibly special to me, especially having grown up very low income to be able to get to the point where I was able to buy a home on my own. That's my cat. After five happy years, a neighbor moves in. All I'm really noticing is that he's home all the time. If I was to describe him, I'd say he's just like a really rough looking average Joe. He had like a buzz cut. The only thing dividing property was a fence line that belonged to the neighbor. I mean, I would see him in his backyard and he would see me in mine, but I'm a fairly private person. Up until everything started getting weird, I don't even know if I said more than two words to this guy. However, one day Serena sees something strange in her backyard, and from that day on, she starts making videos and sharing them online for support. So I'm a little concerned right now. In fact, like, I'm like shaking. I looked out my window and I see this and I'm like, I couldn't believe it. Put up this fence, like he cut the wire and put this other one in that has access to my yard. Why? I'm legitimately like scared. Why did he do this? Serena is not exactly sure where her property line is as she doesn't have her own fence. However, she decides not to confront the new neighbor as she's worried how he may react. But soon things get even more creepy. I haven't been outside since I recorded that video hours ago. Um, I did hear the neighbor outside earlier. I did not look outside. And gates wide open. A roll of toilet paper. What? I'm documenting this gate being open. I am closing it, and I'm going to see if I have a lock. With the gate being open, with that toilet paper roll there, and I knew he must have come onto my property. This was definitely very purposely opened because that did not just magically fall open. I do happen to have a lock, so here we go. I'm trying not to overreact, but at the same time, I am concerned. With the gate locked, Serena feels more secure but later that night, she becomes aware of something outside on her back porch, and the only way onto her porch is through her backyard. I don't keep my porch lights on. There's like no other lights on in the house. I'm in my room and all of a sudden I hear my wind chimes. Like it was not a windy night, breezy, nothing. They're very deliberately being like wrong, which scares me. <laughs> like my heart starts pounding because I just don't know what is going on or what to expect. Serena goes to the door terrified of what may be outside. But all those thoughts go through my head of like, I could be opening this to someone with a knife, a gun. I don't know what I'm opening this up to. So she grabs her gun for safety and goes to the door gripped with fear. What are you doing on my porch? Get off my porch. Really? Get off my porch. Oh my uh, you opened the gate onto my property. It's my gate, you put a lock on it. My property goes to your fence line. I'm not gonna shoot you. Get off my property right now. Get off my property. Get off my property right now. You look like you already did. Stay off my property. I did feel good about the fact that I could get him off my property and that he left, but it was very short-lived because I knew this fight wasn't over. In the next few weeks, Serena's neighbor continues to trespass on her property. Will you please get off my property? You're not supposed to be over here. Don't ever come on my property again! Serena installs an eight-foot-high fence so her neighbor can't invade or even see into her backyard. I have a fence but there's a gap in the fence between their properties that her neighbor is exploiting. My crazy neighbor was coming through that gap and that's how he was accessing my backyard so easily still. Why are you on my property? Please get off my property. You've already had an official warning from the police. So I put up a barrier to protect that. He kicked over that barrier. Serena is terrified as her neighbor is carrying a stick. That's when I called the police and he got an actual trespass charge. And the next night, he kicked in my front door in the middle of the night. 
This time, the neighbor goes round the front of the house and kicks Serena's front door until it's damaged. Serena is sleeping, so she doesn't record the vandalism and only wakes up to see him running away. However, her mother, who is staying with Serena to make her daughter feel safer, films the aftermath. There's no way to even lock it now. No. Oh, great. That was probably the scariest thing. 2.40 in the morning, and all of a sudden, you just hear this shattering sound. After this incident, the neighbor is arrested and charged with criminal mischief and assault. He's currently awaiting trial. Serena takes out a restraining order against her neighbor, so she's more confident he will not trespass again. My neighbor apparently thought that I would make an easy victim, an easy target, but he definitely chose incorrectly. And to make doubly sure, she fixes the gaps in the fence. I am a badass woman. I'm not going to lose what I have worked for for so many years to someone like him. <laughs> Who doesn't love coming home to find a delivery van? With porch piracy on the rise, the only way to ensure your package is safely delivered may be if it's handed to you by the driver themselves. But looks can be deceiving. The delivery driver assumes the woman who just pulled into the driveway lives at this address. But it turns out this stranger is just posing as the homeowner. And once the delivery van is out of sight, she absconds with the package. Porch pirates shadowing delivery trucks is a growing problem in neighborhoods throughout the country. These will follow the trucks hanging back until delivery is made, and then swooping in for the steal. This porch pirate, who's still at large, skips the porch altogether and just lets the package come to her. Security experts suggest having packages sent to a neighbor's house or a work location if you can't be home during delivery times. That way, your package will find its way to you rather than someone pretending to be you. When this local firehouse is loading up groceries, a neighbor comes up, not to commend their fearlessness, but to complain about how his taxes are spent. I know you guys cannot do anything about the fire tax, so I have to pay extra. Yes, sir. You drive all the way down here. Why don't you guys shop there at the local store? We do. The firemen awkwardly load their groceries as the neighbor scolds them for taking their truck to an out-of-town supermarket. I'm going to go in front of the board of supervisors and make a complaint. The man looks over to another neighbor recording for some support. Yes, I'm glad you're taking pictures. Yeah, because I definitely don't support you. But the man recording is backing the firefighters. You ought to just leave them be because they're just trying to make a living and trying to get their food. But man. I'm paying for them to be down here on the clock. That's OK with me, and I pay taxes, too. The firemen pay for their own groceries and have to stretch their dollar to buy food for the whole firehouse. Why do they drive all the way downtown? They can shop there at the local store right around the corner. Why would you want to pay double? The store around the corner from the station is a gourmet market with higher prices. Why would you want to pay double? Well, why do I want to pay for the fuel, the maintenance on this vehicle, and everything else? It's ridiculous for the taxpayers. Sir, we have to go. Is there anything else we can do? You're wasting no, our time right now. Not do anything else. Before the firemen leave, the neighbor makes sure to document everyone and everything. You're on a I will take street. a picture of your vehicle right Go now. Go right ahead. Sir, you, you have a nice day. There's nothing else we can do. I got you. I got you. I got you. got you. Sir, there is a form at our headquarters station. Your license too. Where you can file a citizen's complaint. I will file a citizen's complaint. And I hope you put this on the news too. It doesn't make the news, but the clip does get posted online where it goes viral, racking up more than a million views. This is totally ridiculous. I understand, I understand. If there's anything else we can do for you, please let us know. No, thank you. All right, okay. hope you enjoy your day, sir. As for the disgruntled neighbor, he reportedly has yet to file a complaint at the fire station, leading neighbors to believe he's found something else to complain about. I got you too, you And I got you too. Uh! It's early evening in Atlanta, Georgia, and a delivery man named Cece is making his last stop of the day. He's eager to get home to relax, 
when he's approached by a woman whose mail he just delivered. And he immediately starts recording. I am not happy. I'm tempted to check your pockets. In fact, I'm calling the police. You can call who you like to call, ma'am, but I gotta go. No, you're not going anywhere. The woman claims that when she got her package, it was already open. And it doesn't take long for what appears to be one of her family members to intervene. You know this lady? She just signed that package. She just told me what she got already. Okay, well, I didn't you take the package. You are not going anywhere. You stole my mala. Don't hit me, ma'am. Don't you hit me. Don't you, you stole me. my mala. Malas are necklaces, like the one she is wearing, often used in meditation. It's said they can help the wearer find a calm mind and a sense of peace. You stole my jewelry out of this package. Girl, I am I'm not happy. Empty your f***ing pockets. I'm not emptying nothing. Not a thing. Empty your f***ing pockets. I'm not emptying anything, ma'am. Come on. You're being recorded. Come on. You sure are. The woman's apparent family member steps in to defuse the situation, and Cece heads for the exit. But the woman isn't done with Cece yet. And this beautiful jewelry that you stole. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Why would I give you an empty package if I steal it? Cece is finally able to head home, but that's not the last he hears from the enraged neighbor. According to him, she shows up at his job the following day and demands that the person who stole her mala be fired. But Cece's employer reiterates that it was simply a case of the package being damaged. Cece's route has since been changed to another location in the neighborhood, and he no longer makes deliveries to the building. But he hopes she finds a replacement mala to bring her some peace. Empty your pockets! I'm not emptying anything, ma'am. <laughs> Vero Beach, Florida boasts an exclusive waterfront neighborhood with expensive homes. And today, one of the homeowners has taken issue with a local man who was wade fishing in front of her house. Should I call the cops too? No. Yeah, yeah. That's, not, 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 that's good. Now you're harassing me. The neighbor is threatening to call the police as she claims the man is trespassing on her property. So he starts recording. You don't own the water. You own that. You own that. I own from that telephone pole all the way down. All this water is yours? Yes. Impossible. While the neighbor may not wish to engage in a war of words, she's not backing down. I, exactly. Get mad. Get mad. I'm going to make you famous. And if he's going to make her famous, she's going to make him wet. Look at you. You're bored. You must be a bored woman. But then be rich, good, but, but you're miserable. You, okay, you're rich, but you're miserable. And now the neighbor goes from verbal taunts to physical threats. That's fine. That's fine, that's fine. You'll go to jail, he'll go to jail. Now, now that's a threat and I have it recorded. Thank you. Yeah, go inside, get something to eat. Get something to eat. The fisherman leaves, but later he asks the local sheriff to check the property deeds. And the sheriff confirms that the neighbor only owns five feet of shoreline, so anyone is entitled to fish there without the threat of an unwanted shower. And the territorial neighbor is not off the hook. To her surprise, the next week, members of the local fishing community organize a fishing trip right in front of her house to prove that the Indian River is for everyone to use. DeKalb, Illinois. It's 2 a.m. A man who appears to be drunk leaves a neighborhood restaurant and is now in his car about to drive home with a woman in the front passenger seat. I don't know, but I'm going to record this in case he's drunk. He is drunk as You can tell just by looking at him. Just moments earlier, the man recording this video, who lives next door to the restaurant, claims he witnessed neighbors unsuccessfully try to stop the driver from getting into his SUV. Oh, uh, hell no. Hell no, man. Yeah, this dude's pissed ass drunk. Look, he can't even get out the parking lot. Despite having difficulty getting out of the parking lot, the reckless driver turns onto the street and speeds off. Oh, my God. Concerned neighbors rush to the scene of the accident to help the victims of the crash. You stupid drunk. 
I got that on camera too. You drunk piece of You're a scumbag, you. Hey, don't go, don't go. Come on, man. Are you okay? My bad. Here, no. hold, record this. Just, just stand back and record this. The man recording this video hands off his camera to another concerned neighbor so he can help the driver who was struck head on. I think you're okay. I think you're just a little shook up. All right, all right. Here, get out of the car. Yeah, get out of the car. Come on. Come on, come on. Thankfully, the woman is wearing her seatbelt and the car's airbags deployed. Here, step by the car. I don't, I don't want it to catch on fire or anything like that. I think My you're bad. okay. You okay? Here, step over here. She's lucky to be alive, as are all those involved in this crash. My bad, bro. After getting her to safety, the neighbor confronts the drunk driver and is concerned for the condition of the woman passenger who remains inside the car. My bad, bro. No, you're a idiot. You're a piece of I hope you put in jail. You're a scumbag. Are you okay, ma'am? Are you okay? Get the out of the way. You need to move so I can see if she's okay. Get the, well, get the back. You're making me nervous. Are you okay? Here, you get out of the car. Can you, can you climb across? Hey, did you call the police? No, no. I don't think she needs an ambulance. Where do you live? Right here. I heard it from inside my house. This talk, bro. You okay sitting there? You're not gonna move? Sure. All right, I guess she's all right. We need a number. Yeah, oh, here's the police right here. I'm good. I'm good. No, you ain't good. You're going to no, jail. No, I don't care. Here. Here. Just doing it. Sure, she's good. Is my girl good? I guess. Okay. That's really, it's really weird that you would question that now before your drunk ass got in the car and drove. I saw you get in the car. Police, firefighters, and paramedics soon arrive on the scene and provide medical assistance to the injured victims. Both women are treated for minor injuries and brought to a local hospital for further evaluation, while police put the slurring driver through a sobriety field test, which he fails miserably. DeKalb police charge him with a DUI, a DUI over .08, and a failure to yield turning left. The driver is fortunate he didn't kill anyone, including himself. A sobering reminder to everyone, never drink and drive, and stop your neighbor if they try to do so. <laughs> Little Egg, New Jersey is a small, laid-back township on the Atlantic Ocean where Eliza and Brad Rhodes relocate from the city with Brad's parents. Brad and I and Brad's parents all moved down together. It was a new start, uh, living on the water. It's a small shore town, so people have lived here generation after generation. We thought this was the perfect neighborhood until we met our next door neighbors. Our neighbors are an older couple who have lived here for over 40 years. According to Eliza, the first warning sign is when the neighbors make an unusual complaint. They didn't like the smell of our dryer sheets because our vent faces the side of their house. So we went out and bought dryer balls because we're trying to accommodate because we're the new family in town. And then whatever it was, they would pick out the next thing. In the following months, the neighbors become more antisocial so Eliza and Brad start to record them, and it only adds to the weirdness when the neighbor starts cackling at them. She sounds like a witch. Even though the neighbor is taking pictures of Brad and Eliza, she is annoyed that they are recording her. So one day, when Brad is in the front yard, her husband launches a verbal attack. Brad in the <laughs> ground, you piece of you will? Is that all Stalker. 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 What's the matter? Stalker! That's you, you You're crazy. Yeah, you're crazy. You're then what are you doing with the phone? Get you're the phone out of here. And now you hit. Yeah, it hits you, your feet. When it became physical, it took it to a whole other level. Once that line was crossed, we were afraid. We didn't know where the next step was going to go. But what happens next is worse than Eliza and Brad could ever imagine. The neighbors go online and find out dark secrets about Eliza's past to use against her. Balance. Balance. You're balanced. You're balanced. You're balanced. You're balanced. <laughs> Ooh. They did everything to mentally terrorize myself and my family. I was a heroin addict, and I did whatever I had to do to get the next one. And then got sober, met Brad, got sober. Balance. Balance. Eliza has now been drug and alcohol free for eight years. You're failing. You're failing. 
and works to help others in recovery. So she finds her neighbor's taunts tough to take. I feel very judged actually tearing up. It was actually really hard to hear every single day all of these horrific things I had done while in my addiction. And the insults only get worse. <laughs> it made me sick to look at you. When I see you, I want to throw the <laughs> This is what the neighborhood has to put up with. It would be daily. They would yell constantly. Are you drunk? Shut Are you up. high? Shut up. <laughs> you. Yeah. Hank. Look at that. You and your pushed in face. Faces. Incestuous. Eliza and Brad report their neighbors to the police. Just give me your driver's okay. license, Emma. I will issue yourself. But the neighbors also call the cops with wild claims of their own that are untrue. We got investigated for running a meth house. Elder abuse. Yeah. Holding someone hostage in the house. And literally, the cops were on this street every single day. But just as Eliza and Brad are in the process of taking the neighbors to court, suddenly everything changes. After three and a half difficult years, You're a stupid they get the welcome news that their neighbors you know, deserve to be in you the hit me. are relocating to a different state. They don't know why, but they're just happy that they're gone. Since our neighbors have moved, Brad and I will go out back and sit in the hammock at night and look at the stars, and we couldn't do that before. Couldn't enjoy the yard. Couldn't enjoy the water. Today we can. If you're stupid, you belong in a nursing home. Because oh, you, you got dementia. If I could say anything to my neighbors, I would say, one, you reap what you sow. Two, karma. The third thing I would say is, we didn't give up as a family, and we won. A quiet Sunday evening in the suburbs is suddenly gripped by panic. A mom can't believe what she is seeing. All these cars. Oh. Just waiting because there is a freaking Bengal tiger <laughs> boom in this yard. Neighbors are feverishly messaging each other to ask where the tiger comes from or who it belongs to. It seems to have appeared out of nowhere. And this dude needs to be careful. Holy cow. With her children locked behind doors, the woman dials 911. Then she recognizes one fearless neighbor as an off-duty sheriff's deputy. He is attempting to hold back the man-eater at gunpoint. Oh my gosh, he's gonna shoot it. He's gonna shoot it. But the tiger keeps on coming. No. No. The heck? Why is there a tiger? <laughs> Suddenly a man appears out of frame and he's attracting the tiger's attention. He's claiming to Claiming to be the tiger's owner is able to lure it into his vehicle and drive away. Police catch up with him. He reveals the animal is nine months old, named India and being kept illegally right under neighbors' noses. Just two doors down from the mom who filmed this video. Oh my gosh. India is given a new home at an animal sanctuary in Murchison, Texas. Called Black Beauty Ranch, it is run by the Humane Society of the United States, which is lobbying for legislation that would prohibit big cats from being kept as pets. <laughs> While gender reveals can be lots of fun for family and friends, the neighbors likely couldn't care less if it's a boy or a girl. It's a boy! As long as it's not a mess. And the more elaborate gender reveals become, the more taxing they become on the neighborhood. And even if the neighbors are invited, they still end up getting the short end of the stick. In Philadelphia, this expectant couple is in the backyard surrounded by friends and neighbors. They light their gender-themed fireworks together, and everyone celebrates as pink clouds explode overhead. But in the excitement, no one notices what's happening. The fireworks are unwisely propped up on a drying rack, 
And when the first rocket launches, it jostles the whole box of fireworks loose. A few more rockets shoot up before the fireworks fall off the rack, and no one notices until it's too late. Rockets shoot into the crowd as family and neighbors scramble to find safety. But aside from a few minor burns, no one is seriously injured in the mayhem. So while some may love gender reveals, the neighbors might not be as tickled pink. Lando Lakes, Florida resident Jennifer Michelle is out of the house visiting her mother nearby when she receives a doorbell cam notification on her phone. When she checks the camera's app, to her dismay, she sees two sheriff deputies and a handyman drilling the locks to her front door. Hello? 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 What are you doing? Uh, we're here to finalize the eviction. What eviction? Posted a week ago. It was posted last week. On my house? Yes, ma'am. This is clearly news to Jennifer. I'm, I'm pulling up on my bills. My dad's are inside there. What is your name? My name is Jennifer, and that is my house. Jennifer, what's your last name, Jennifer? Hey, hey. My, my last name? The two sheriff's deputies check Jennifer's house number to confirm they're evicting the right tenant. When? Oh, damn it. I am caught up on my bills. Nobody has served me an eviction notice. Yeah, I think. Huh? What the hell is going on? One of the deputies begins the walk of shame back to Jennifer's door to inform her they've got the right neighborhood, but the wrong house. Hey, we actually, we do apologize. We have the wrong house with the next door neighbors. What we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to, they're gonna have to repair their lock on that. My dogs are inside. No, no, we're not going in. We're not going in. Hey, uh, real quick, what's what's your phone number? Let me call you. Worried she might find her dogs loose and all her belongings in the street, Jennifer rushes back home to her neighborhood. You know what? I'm at my mom's house. I will be there in 15 minutes. 15? Okay, we'll be here. Yes, sir. The deputies not only apologize profusely to Jennifer for the mix-up, but they quickly change her locks and pick up lunch for her and her mom. Maybe Jennifer could pay it forward and take her future next door neighbor out to lunch. We do apologize. We have the wrong house. <laughs> Mom, Carissa Nash, is not surprised to see a nine-year-old kid from her daughter's class on their security camera. Until suddenly... Carissa's daughter and the boy had a falling out at school earlier that day. Now shocked that he is thrashing her door with a whip, this mom lays down the law. You boy, you better get your ass from off my porch beating on my door like this. I will call the police. You need to leave. Don't you ever be on my door like that. Go. OK. After the boy leaves, the mom claims he scratches the family's car with a whip. So later, she and her husband go across the street to confront the child's parents. Your dad's here, I just seen him. I didn't talk to him. Your son beat on mine. I didn't talk about these damages to my car. Your son, let me show you the video. If you come outside and talk like an adult, then maybe we can figure it out. I'm gonna show you the video of your son hitting our door with this wheel and hitting our car. Have you seen? Donald's son never touched your car. We you have, have a video that he touched your car? The neighbor does, across the street. We have it on video. All right, get off my property. Seriously, get off my property. Well, that's it. Because you ain't because you ain't coming over here talking nicely. You're accusing my son. I'm showing you the video. We're I'm showing you the video. video. The door. You ain't showing me the video of me scratching your car. Get off my plan. Now, the boy's dad is taking issue that the other dad is standing on his grapevine, and things are getting heated. No, that's my grapevine. All right, all right, man. Okay, all thank right. you. You owe me a plant if I, I don't, don't owe you. I don't owe you. I bet you won't bring no Can you please, please stop, sir? All we want to do is just on, talk to you civil. Y'all so violent. Y'all came over here. Please, no. Y'all came over here with a and then the mom notices something that alarms her. You have a gun. Please bring your ass outside. 
outside without the gun then, bitch. I'm going to come out. As the neighbor picks up the gun, he accidentally discharges it while his daughter stands close behind him in the doorway. Luckily, the bullet doesn't hit anyone. Oh, my God! I'm, oh, my God! The couple goes home, but later, when the county sheriff's office see the videos, they charge the neighbor with deadly conduct for careless handling of a weapon. And shortly afterwards, he and his family move out of the area. As for the son, he's too young to face charges. However, let's hope he learns how to be a better neighbor in his new neighborhood.